Hi. In this lecture, I want to introduce you to formulas and how to solve them. In a previous lecture, I've already talked about how to solve linear equations, an equation with just a single variable in it, like the variable x, the variable y. But in this case, we're looking at formulas that have a whole bunch of things in them, variables, numbers, symbols that we're sometimes familiar with, for example, the letter pi. But how do we solve these? And what does that really mean when we say we're going to solve a variable in a formula? Well, what that really means is we want to take a particular formula, like this one right here. This means the interest earned on principal invested at a certain rate for a certain time. And sometimes we want to take these, these formulas, these equations or formulas, and rearrange them so that we have a single variable, a different variable, on the left side of the equation. For example, if I want to solve this, this formula, this equation for the letter P, for the principal, how do we do that? For example, if I want to solve this equation for the letter P, and now here you see that the letter P appears twice in that equation, how do you do that? Here, let's say we want to solve this equation for the letter W. This is the perimeter of a rectangle, it's twice the length plus twice the width. And here, this is the area of a circle, and let's say that we want to solve this equation for the letter R. How do we do that? Well, it turns out that if we follow this very strict procedure, it becomes really easy. So let's see what those strict procedures are. Well, the first thing you do is you look at where the variable is at. In this case, the variable is on the right side equal sign instead of the left side equal sign. But what we can do is we can simply turn the equation around. So I'm going to write this on the left side, this on the right side, and don't do anything else. Simply turn it around. All right, so we have P R T equals I. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you once tell me that if I put something on the other side equals sign, you have to change the sign, and that is indeed correct. So technically, if we put the I on the right side, it becomes a minus I. And if we put the P R T on the left side, it becomes a minus P R T. But then if you multiply both sides by negative 1, they become positive again, so we just do that in one, swall, in one swoop. So simply move, move this to the left, move that to the right, and things are good. It's like turning the equation around. Over here, we'll do the same thing. We turn the equation around, so we write P plus PRT equals A. And again, if you do it at the same time, you don't have to worry about the signs. Over here, again, what we'll do is we'll write this as 2L plus 2W equals P. And over here, we'll write p r squared equals a. So in each case, in each of these formulas, the variable we're looking for was on the right side of the equation, and we want to move the left side of the equation by simply turning the equation around. Now, there's other cases where that won't quite work that way, but we'll see those cases later on. OK, and the next thing we want to do, just like we do in the equations where I have a single variable, we'll look at the variable we're, look, we're, we're trying to solve for, for example, the letter p, and we want to get rid of all these other ones, r and t. Well, to do that is we can divide the left side of the equation by r and t, the two variables we want to get rid of. But of course, whatever we do to the left side of the equation, we must also do to the right side of the equation, divide by r over t. And now notice that this r cancels out this r, and this t cancels out this t, and now we have what we call isolated the variable we're looking for, the variable p, so we end up with p equals i divided by rt. So, very straightforward. First thing you do is look where the variable is that you want. It's on the right side of the equation. So flip the equation around, goes to the left side. Then divide both sides of the equation by the variables you don't want, the r and the t, of course. Whatever you do to the left side, you must do to the right side. And then you can see how r and t cancels out, and you end up with the variable that you want, that you're solving for. So the principal is the interest earned divided by the rate multiplied times the time. Okay. Same over here, although there's a little bit of difference here. Here we see that the p appears twice in two terms on the left side of the equation. What you must do then is you must isolate that by factoring out the p. So you take the p out of the p plus p r t, and this becomes 1 plus r t. If you're not sure, if you did this right, this step right, what you want to do then is you want to multiply this back in, just kind of think about it. If I multiply p times 1, I get p back. If I multiply p times r times t, I get p r t back. So you did this correctly. All right, and the left and the right side of the equation is still a. 
At that point, you realize that now we have the variable we want, p, multiplied by all of this. So we're going to divide the left side by 1 plus rt, and we, of course, have to divide the right side by 1 plus rt, just like that. Then you realize that just like on this side, this whole thing here cancels this thing right here, and you end up with p equals a divided by 1 plus rt. It's not so bad when you follow these particular rules. All right, now in this case, we have two terms on the left side. One of them that has the variable we're looking for, the other one does not. So we want to move this one to the outside equation, just like before when we solve linear equations with just one variable. Whenever we move one item to the other side, the sign changes. So this becomes 2w equals p minus 2l. So the rule still applies. Whenever you move any one item across the equal sign, the sign has to change. Now at this point, we have just the variable we're looking for isolated on the left side, but we still have the number 2. So just like before, we divide this by 2. We divide the whole right side by 2. And then you realize that these cancel, and we have w equals p minus 2l over 2. All right, now we look over here. Same thing, the variable we're looking for, now we move to the left side of the equation. We want to get rid of the pi, so we divide both sides by pi. And I do realize that the r is still squared. You know, what do I do with that? Don't worry about it, leave it till later. First get rid of the other numbers and variables or, or um, constants. In this case, we have the pi. So divide both sides by pi. And again, this cancels out, and we're left with r squared equals a over pi. And now in this case, since we have r squared, and we simply want r by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we're going to square root the left side, we're going to square root the right side. And the square root of r squared simply gives us r, and on the right side we simply have the square root of a over pi. There you go. That's how you solve for a variable in any formula. Simple rule, if the variable is on the right side of the equation, simply flip the equation around, then divide both sides of the equation by the other variables or other numbers that are on the left side along with the variable that you want to isolate. You can see that you have to do it to both sides, and then you also realize that when you do that, you simply cancel the other variables and you're left with the variable all by itself.